Hey there, fans of brotherly love wrestling. It is I, Vic Delicious. Philly's own, the Mecca here. It is the real McCoy, J D X Justin D Xavier. And it's your man, CD, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old friend, RJ City. Hey there, brotherly love wrestling. Bill Carr here. Hey everyone, this is two-time guest Wheeler Yuta. Two bozos from Philadelphia flapping their gums about pro wrestling this, pro wrestling that. Which is not that unique in the grand scheme of things yet. You are in for a treat because you're tuned in to Brotherly Love Wrestling. Philadelphia, are you ready? This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome everybody to Brotherly Love Wrestling, and on the show this week, uh, we definitely wanted to touch on the Dusty Rhodes biography on A and E because I feel like it has tied ties obviously to the storyline going on with Cody Rhodes. Are they related? A little bit. Oh, okay. Just just a little. Just bit. a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Once Dist- removed dist- or something. Distance. Yeah. yeah. Half nephews. Or something. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to get your thoughts. Because I watched it and I told you, you have to see this. You told me I have to watch it because you gave me homework. Yes. Yeah, but good homework. It wasn't bad homework. Yeah. If I were to have homework like that throughout all of school, I would have been doing a lot better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except you undersold it and said it was only an hour long. So I started it a little later thinking, eh, That's my I got plenty of time. That's- Two hours later, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm exhausted. <laughs> But I got through most of it, and I say got through. What a, <laughs> I was thinking about it after, because I, I knew we were going to talk about it on the show, because let's face it, it was homework. Um, and I started thinking while I was watching it, I was like, I was envious of my father. I Yeah, I agree. I was very, very envious, because like when, once they said like 1986, like June, June of 1986, I was like, I wasn't even born. I was like, God damn, I was like... <laughs> This would have been a great era to get, like, if it was, like, televised and it was, like, mm-hmm. wider spread, like, shit like that. Like, him and Flair was amazing. Well, imagine. To see him, like, in the territory. Like, if you got to, thing, like, follow like, his, like, somehow. Because they're not picking it up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like they said, he's a specialty act. He became, like, a, a quote-unquote draw. Yeah. People wanted to see him. Like how do you like how do you find out about that back in the day? There, there is, is it not. just mag- magazines? Yeah, and you it. have to hope that like you read about it, mm-hmm. and you have to hope like shit. I wonder if I like hopefully like they get here because there's not like well like how Vince brought him in for here and there. Yeah, but I was like TV. That was that wasn't even TV taping. This was just live shows, right? Yeah, but I'm saying like up north, if you're reading like you know I mean for New York at that time, yeah, like. If you're a New York fan, you're reading about this Dusty Rose, like you know what I mean. And then finally, that's crazy. That's a crazy concept. It is. It is it's a crazy because we're so used to nationally televised mm-hmm. when we were younger. In that age, we were like yeah. really, really in the wrestling. I'm not saying that we're not really, really in the wrestling right now, but for its purity, yes, yeah. Like we it was like it was easy. Like yeah. nowadays, it's. Beyond fucking easy. It's yeah. everywhere. Anywhere you could possibly mm-hmm. find it, you can find wrestling. But we were, I mean, I don't want to say coddled of the options, but we were coddled with the content. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if coddled is even the right word. We were, well, compared we were to- fortunate to have what we had. And even, and then you look at the fans and kids of today, like even more fortunate because, like, literally at your fingertips, you could pull up any wrestling ever. At your fingertips, with between YouTube, the network, that with everything AEW, all the streaming services that exist, like there's wrestling. W- imagine having just that. Forget like your dad's era, like our era. Imagine having that kind of access to wrestling. Like we had USA Network and we had uh, TNT. That was it. 
That's the only thing we watch wrestling on when we were when we were like you said really into it, like in 10, 11, 12, Like you know I mean that. And you find some local shit too. I remember seeing like ROH on like local and and ECW of course. Yeah, you know what I mean. On but here in Philly, you can get it late nights. You know, yeah. What I mean? But yeah, like you now looking at like Dusty and watching that until obviously Jim Crockett. You know what I mean, and and Turner, where they finally got on the Superstation every now and then. Yeah. That was the only time you were able to see Dusty, but that was late Dusty. That was coming out of all of the flare shit. I mean, and of course, Harley Race and I mean, everything. Thankfully, we got the video footage of the Hard Times promo. Like, thankfully, like, imagine cutting that and no one ever seeing it or it being like, it wouldn't have as much power and (laughs) pop. The one thing that made me laugh really hard out loud was when Cody is talking about him after he broke his leg. Yeah. And finding Dusty's... No, you're talking about Dustin. Dustin, I'm sorry. Dustin. Yeah. yeah. Dustin finding his... Oh, yeah. When he's his like, cast. He, he K-faped his kids. He K-faped his kids. Like, <laughs> he wore his cast around the house and put it in the back of his closet. Like that, That's dedication. That Yes. That's that, dedication. Like, you wonder why guys like Taker... And are the way they are about the business protect. They yes. use the word protect the business exactly, and it's that. It's those are the guys they watched. You know what I mean? They how about Hogan came like, up on? Oh yeah, yeah. Hogan idolizing Dusty. I never would have ever imagined. And we that. don't know if it was the truth or if it's just, they're just bringing Hogan in and Hogan's just talking. Yeah, but I mean, look, I can see the superstar Billy Graham. Like, yeah, yeah I, I can see I think that. Everyone, everyone saw that. I think everyone saw that from where he came from and and how he grew his character. But look at that interview, the promo that he cut. He literally sounded like he was trying yeah, to he, rip off dust. Yeah, it's because he was doing the lisp. Yeah, it has to be <laughs> yeah. fucking natural. You can't just you can't just you do a lisp. just add a lisp. <laughs> like that's fucked up. Well, look, wrestling. Nothing is sacred. Everything. Everything is stolen, up to be stolen. Stolen exactly. from somewhere. Yeah. Only thing is, you have to be able to do it better, and he definitely did not. No, he not landed on his feet, though, didn't he? I think, yeah, yeah, it worked out well for him. It worked out all right. Yeah, uh, but the other thing, and the one of the main reasons I said, obviously, aside from it being amazing documentary and finding out different things about Dusty, I know that I didn't know. Well, you found out not just things about Dusty, but Dustin, Dustin, yes, a lot about Dustin too. I like think that was more almost... about Dustin almost than Dusty because I mean was... we knew a lot about Dusty already. Dustin, I mean, everyone knew that he that it was common knowledge to wrestling fans, at least nowadays, that he was the neglected child because of the run Dusty was going on when he was younger. But the yeah, not- you got you got his perspective of exactly. It. Like yes. you don't really ever got you never really, no. Like I don't remember every like because I've listened. I he, listened to him on. Excuse was me. it Edge of Christian? I think he was on there, and he got like they went, they went kind of deep, but nothing was ever like that. Like, yeah. Well, I remembered the interview that they showed with him and Marlena that, or Terry, um, that where he was like bad, kind of bad mouthing Dusty, where they did without the makeup and he had the white shirt on. I remember that, but we were so young when that like that didn't mean anything yeah, didn't, to us it, then yeah it didn't register now looking at it i was like holy shit like it means a lot more and then the 5 years not talking to him and then it just you know what i mean breaking down being in the same place at the same time like a lot of that it was it was heavy like i said it was heavy stuff and then of course seeing his illness and seeing dusty's illness and how skinny he got towards the end um which of course we've seen when he yeah. did the mania thing and he did battleground mm-hmm. or bat was it uh not battleground uh, what was the pay-per-view he did with dustin and cody um where they were doing to get it was a two on it was a handicap with the shield it was dustin and and cody uh for the life of me i'm not gonna be able to remember it you yeah. know that i'm not the guy for this yeah it's not battleground because we we're just talking about battleground championship wrestling i can't remember what the pay-per-view was but that was the one time where he was, was in a great the balls ring. of fire. It wasn't great balls of fire. It was before that. Uh, he was in the ring with his sons, he got to perform with his sons. And he got to whip Dean Ambrose with his belt and give him the bionic elbow. And it was just all full circle to be able to be in there with his kids. It was really a cool scene to see again, because I'm obviously watching when it happened. But 
there was a point specifically that kind of rang true to me because I was saying it last week when we were going back and forth about being pessimistic and optimistic about how, WWE. How Brock is thunderless. Now, well, aside from Brock being thunderless. Gotcha. Uh, how I said that I just didn't think Cody earned it enough. I, I thought he was handed number 30, which if you look at the Rumble, wow, you won it number 30. Big deal. Uh, he had a six-week build with Roman, and he lost. I thought the chase needed to be longer. I thought there needed to be more adversity. And they start talking about Great American Bash with Flair and Dusty and him finally winning and finally overcome. And they get Cody's perspective. And Cody, out of his own mouth, says it wasn't the losses. It was that just the actual one, two, three losses. It was the adversity he had to go through and the heartache and the build to getting back up to beating Flair. And that is called the chase. And like, I was like, yeah, like this is exactly what Cody is doing. This is what he's going through right now. He's going through his hard times phase. He got hurt. He came back. He got so close. Like we said, Rocky one to Rocky two. It. This is it. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now, I'm back and forth on this opinion because so are they really running? Sure. Are they running Rocky two or are they running Dusty Flair? Yeah, I, I'm now watching that documentary and seeing kind of how Cody was talking about it. Now I'm I'm split on that. All right, so here's the thing: <laughs> in the era of wrestling that we live in, could that much of a long drawn out? Could three losses in a row? Two rains. Two rains. Does that water it down? Does that, because of the attention span and everything that goes into overthinking and all that, I think and with, outside voices? I think with today's wrestling fans, yes. Um, They got to do it. If they're going to do it, they got to do it. It has to be done perfectly. It has to be weaved in and out the perfect way. It ha- There has to be distractions. There has to be little offshoots to where he eventually comes back and we think it's going to happen this again and it doesn't. And that's why I also said to you, I, I'm i split on this. I'm going to say it, but I'm still split on it. I'm not yeah, definitively into it. Go ahead. I still it doesn't think, matter. To, uh, if we don't make the decisions anyway, no. so it doesn't really matter. I still think when we're in Lincoln Financial Field in April of next year, we are going to see Cody versus Roman for the Universal title again, the Undisputed Universal title again. I think that's where you think they go happens. a year a year build? You think they pull a Rock Cena and do a year build and have Cody? So or yeah, well Roman would be the Rock in this case. Yeah, if he goes part time. Yeah, and they would basically have to do like it would be Heyman carrying it. Yeah, Heyman and Cody. Yeah, and, and depending on what and, the bloodline happens with the bloodline, yeah. So the where I where I got my wavering in this is Monday after this past Monday, um, listening to Busted Open talk about Dusty and then start to talk about what's next and how they're building with Cody and the parallels of the documentary with Dusty. They brought up a couple good points, and one is September, Madison Square Garden. WWE is back. Is it a live show? I'm not sure. Like, they never... Never said it was Raw or SmackDown. They just said WWE is returning to the usually, Garden. Because usually the Garden's the live, live show. show. Yes, I know. But and we got to catch spoilers, and that's where – didn't Styles win there? Yeah. KO won there, didn't he? Or did Styles beat KO? I think Styles beat, beat KO, KO for the U.S. title. Yeah. That's when he was the face of America. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Canadian face Canadian, of America. Yeah, yeah, the Canadian face of America. Um, but – so they brought that parallel because – it's almost like within three or four days of Dusty winning in Madison Square Garden. And they were like, could they spin it? Could they do it then? Could they do it at SummerSlam? Could they do it at Rumble? Because the one thing that Mark Henry brought up and it kind of made me laugh was, you don't want to do this and try and build Cody Rhodes as the guy that you have to love in front of Philadelphia. Because if you tell Philadelphia who they should like, we all know what the Philadelphia fans of Philadelphia are going to do. They're going to make sure they don't like that guy. The good thing about WrestleMania is 
is that it won't be it, there'll be a lot of Philadelphians there, but you get a it's a, a, a WrestleMania whole crowd's a different crowd. Mix mash yes. of people. So as much as I yes, if this was held in the Wells Fargo and it was all Philadelphia fans, yeah, I could see that happening where they would turn on Cody. Yeah. Ooh, we did it to Roman. We've done it numerous times. We've done it to Santa Claus. I mean, we'll, we will do it to anybody. If anybody walks in there, we do. You tell right. us to like somebody that we should like them or we should love them, we should yeah, cheer for ben, them, ben, we're not going ben to. Ben Simmons. Exactly. We're not going to. It's not going to happen. No, we don't operate that way. We were very uh, anti-authority. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, if they did it at WrestleMania, it would be a much larger crowd that would not just be. It would be the whole country travels, the whole world travels yes yes so you're gonna have a because it, it was the same thing in new york it wasn't just new yorkers no it wasn't no a lot of a lot of uh people from around the country and a lot of people from around the world there it's the, a completely different story the other the other thing that made me uh also agree with the point of mania and the year build is bully brought up a good point and said there's one man well and he forgot about the other the the other few that that did this as well. He said there's one man that built a feud for one year and the wrestlers didn't even touch, and that's Paul Heyman. And it was Taz and Sabu. He ran that story for a year and they never touched until the pay per view. Much much smaller scale, absolutely. But it's still a storyline in wrestling. Yes, a storyline in wrestling. And you're talking about the Philadelphia fans, for the most part, buying into that. Yes. Yes. And and then, of course, as he was saying that in my head, I thought Sting Hogan, WCW. It was the only other time I remember you having a year build without Roxy. Rock Cena. Rock Cena... Rock Cena was more, they did in-ring promos, face-to-face, did stuff like that. That's how it would be for WWE. I agree. But he, I think he was talking, like, not in the same building, not in the same place, no touching, nothing for a year. Now, I don't, again, like you said, I agree. WWE ain't going to do that. But to have those two not have a match for a year... I, I mean, don't, it's doable. I agree, it's doable. I, mean, I don't know doable. if they're willing to do it. The problem with recent history is that one fans get bored, two the storyline goes wonky. That's probably one and one a that they just abandon it for yeah. some reason. Yeah, like they'd have to be a hundred percent fully committed, and this would have would already have to be drawn out and just tweaked mm-hmm. as weeks go by. And I'm not talking like major tweaking, like Vince tweak, like we're gonna give Cody a fucking Australian accent type tweak, but. Like minor details can be changed, but this has to be in in the works. Yeah, everything's got to be perfect. Yeah, that's why, I, and that's why I'm teetering because I don't know if it can happen at Mania. I don't know if they can do that. I don't know if the fans can last with it. I I'm not really sure. Now, look, the bloodline thing has been going on for ten months. For yeah, for a ten month span, and people have been locked in. Yes, but they have touched numerous times. Correct. Correct. Numerous times I in agree. big ways. Yes, I know that. So I don't Cody know. Can you do... keep it? Can you keep it going? I'm not. Well, look sure. what happened to Sammy. Sammy had the the biggest match of his career, and now he's a tag team wrestler. Yeah. Cody lost the biggest match of his career, and he's still the guy who's being talked about. I don't. Sammy's still over as all fucking hell. Of course, but. The majority of the talk is still with Cody Rhodes from the big sources. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, for the most part, Cody Rhodes is the the talk. Like, everyone doesn't think that it's over. So, if you already have that in the people's mind that it's not over, you already have their attention. You just have to keep it. Yeah. Well, now, it, I don't have faith that they could do it for a year. That I agree. I don't. That's just, why I'm and that's, and that's only because it's. it's it's only because of the recent product. Mm-hmm. Like, I do, I just don't see them trying to go a year. I mean, for fuck's sake, Roman Reigns has been a hell of a champion for two years. No, going on three years. Yes, yeah, going on three. Going on three years. 
They were able to do that. They were able to do that very, very, very well. Yeah, three He's years ago, the, if we would have said Roman Reigns will be champ for three years, for three years, there's no way we would believe it. We would have probably, no turned, we would have probably not tuned in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would have probably been like, "There's no point." But yeah. everything they've made him feel like the biggest fucking deal. So, I mean, it's Roman. You, Roman, you Ra- see why I'm I, no, no, no. You're right, wavering, and I'm, go- I'm just without you saying anything, I'm gonna depict why you're wavering mm-hmm. so roman reigns being the counterpart to this helps yeah. immensely yeah just because of who he is and how he's got there and where he is and being the tribal chief he really doesn't have to do anything on his side like he's already his legacy is already cemented mm-hmm. like he doesn't really have to do much now cody on the other hand i think cody could carry this because he's gonna have to, he's gonna basically have to pull his inner Dusty and and just kill it with every promo. And they're gonna, if they do run it this way, it would kind of be like a Dusty Flair Rocky fucking <laughs> hybrid yeah. mix, yeah. yeah. Where he would be, he would turn himself into the ultimate underdog and just can like complete the. He co- would have to go defy pro- the odds, promo to promo yeah. to promo to get everyone behind him. That's the problem. That's the problem because what Dusty was doing was playing to a majority. The way Cody looks and the way how Cody, he looks like he's he's uh, talking to the top one percent with his suits and his yeah his lifestyle and his he had a TV show he had two TV shows. I mean, that's great for Cody, but it's it's a He's going to have an uphill battle. Like, Dusty, all he had to do was talk, and he talked from the heart, and it was relatable because of who he was talking to. And, and he who was, he was going against. And who he was well. going against. He's going against what Cody looks like. Yes. Yes. That, that Cody looks, looks like Flair. Yes. Yeah. He's got the Rolex, the suit, the fucking shoes, the fucking the little pocket thingy, my bobber. <laughs> he's got it. He's And the white hair. Yeah. If it was a little longer, he'd be, he wouldn't be. He won't be Dusty's kid. He <laughs> Rick's kid. Uh, yeah, that and that's the thing is that it's anyone a, could hard. identify with Dusty. Well, he, no, he was just talking the blue collar people that that's were watching what I'm saying. the fucking. And, but he got over with the fucking upper echelon of society with the celebrities and the movie stars and the the studio because of his charisma. Old. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Well, Cody but has he was, the charisma, and Rhodes got over to everyone. Not just like like every race, every person. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's Cody's biggest speed hump. Yeah, I, again, that's his biggest hurdle. I don't know. I is, don't know if it could happen. I would like. I don't know even if I want to say I would like to see it happen because it it all depends on the story. So like, I'm still kind of wait and see. Like like you said with the tinkering and and, and kind of moving a little tweaking. bit. They've already now, Matt Riddle has made his way. I don't want to see Matt Riddle. I don't. I mean, look, there's an already built-in story. Solo took him out. So, hence, it makes sense for him to kind of be in this story because Solo took him out. So, it's a revenge story for Riddle. Whether you want to see him or not is irrelevant. Really going to set up a fucking... What? Are they setting this up for Survivor Series somehow in November? They're going to do Riddle. Oh, it might be Backlash, honestly. They might do Riddle and Solo at Backlash. No, no. What if they... What if they Add Riddle into this fucking, and this is their way of trying to keep, like, you get a four-on-four there you go. Survivor Series match. You get Sammy, KO, Riddle, and, Riddle Cody. and Cody versus Roman, Blood. yeah, versus the Bloodline. Yeah, yeah. yeah that really fucking that, that kind of cuts it down, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it could it could lead that way. I mean, it is mid-April. And you get a five-on-five. You, you get still got Summer Slam. You get Heyman in there. Heyman will throw on the, the singlet, and we'll get a... Uh, Brandy. (laughs) (laughs) At least Brandy's Russell. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Look, Heyman will take bumps. He's not afraid of taking bumps. We've seen that in the past. He is not in no shape. (laughs) He's still going to dive through a table by Brock. He did. So he's starting to look more and more like the penguin. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, But so, yeah, I think this is the penguin with Paul Bearer's face. (laughs) This is just getting getting started and it's going to be interesting to see how they do it where they go with it 
if it's true what I what I think that it's Rocky too, but it could be Dusty Flair. It, I don't know. I think it's it, it'd be perfectly okay to mix the two. Yeah, I I agree with that, of course. But here and there, mix in both, absolutely. But I mean, Cody hasn't had a defining promo in WWE. He's had good ones, but as far as Defining. I don't think there's a lot of people that haven't had defining promos in recent years. I don't like. What are you? Are you talking about like a? That's hard. Are you it's talking not, about like an Austin three sixteen? That's a defining promo. Yeah. Are you talking yeah, about? I'm not looking. Talking for about Jericho one. Rock. That's a defining promo. Yeah. That's you, what I'm saying. I haven't seen one of those in fucking forever. Yeah, pipe bomb maybe is the last. Yeah, like what are we what are we talking about here? The finding promo yet? He's been here for a, a cup of coffee. He said, oh, really? I, no, no, I know that. I'm I'm just saying. I think you want him to cut a hard times promo. Not, um, I mean, esque. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not expecting hard times from Cody Rhodes, but Cody's his promos are always the same. Not that that means that they're not good. Not that he, there's anything wrong with that. He's he is very good on the mic, but. A lot of it is his the tone, same. His tone. Yeah, it's a and lot. the way he says it, it's all like. Yeah. I think Cody's got the the ability to get to that next level, though. I hope so, because, like, everything is is the same when I say that is He always ends up getting emotional, and then he always ends up getting fired up. And it's always the same thing happening the same way. Like, I just wish somehow it would, it would switch up. That's kind of like what his dad did, though. Yeah, but Dusty was a little bit different. Again, like you said, you're appealing to a completely different audience. You can talk to a blue collar audience and, and everyone else and then be able to relate to you. Like you said, not many people, I mean, not many people, people can relate to Cody, but a lot more can relate to a guy like Dusty. That's why you said he has a lot to build because he has a lot to fight to fight against to try and win over more people. I just want him to. I wish he would switch it up a little bit, whether it's a softer speaking, more Jake Roberts style to pull you in to get you to really listen or something different. But I feel like he needs a pro, maybe not a defining promo, but a promo that you're blown away by. May not have to be the greatest promo in history or one of, but just something. I have faith that we will get one, if not more than one. Depending on how long this build is, mm-hmm. I have faith in Cody because I like Cody. I like the way I I I get what you're saying, but mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with it. I think Cody is one of my favorite to listen to. I think Cody. I'm always engaged Co- when Cody, Cody grabs a mic. Cody, like his father, just like they said in the in the documentary, he's one that can talk me in. Mm-hmm. To wanting to see something. Yeah. And he's done it numerous times. And he did it a lot in AEW. Because there was times where I was like. This is an okay card. And then the Cody promo would hit. And I'd be like ooh. The, he, Everything felt like a big. For Cody like Roman on a lesser scale. Yeah. Cody's matches felt like big time matches. The the, the And specifically the Dustin. The, the Dustin build. And yeah, when he started but, that. From, at least for me. That was one of the times where I was I was Brody Lee, on that. I think the Brody Lee like that yeah. those were really good for the TNT title. Yeah, I mean yeah. him and MJF I think that was really good. I mean Cody fucking the he he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I mean and now he's just got a better crew behind him. Better production. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that sky's the limit for him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the next uh year ahead of us going to 40 is honestly honestly i don't know i don't know if they're like like you said it's hard to predict which way they're gonna go because sometimes they just like to pull the trigger and we don't know what the backstage looks like we don't know what what roman's schedule looks like yeah like which sucks because you don't want your product to suffer so if roman goes away i think he takes that title with him and i think that's part of the build I don't know how I feel about that because I hated it with Brock. Um, I know, but with Brock, there was no stories. 
There was nothing. Brock he just went, went away. He just went away, and he yeah. took the title with him, and they kind of just didn't have a champion. Like I feel like Roman is still the cha- like we Brock was the champion. We barely even got reference of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until it was time for him to wrestle, and then they would do a fucking half ass build. He would come back. Someone would be there for him, and that would be it. Like we know. What's going on? That's we, true. we have an idea. And you have a lot of other people, like we said, with Heyman and the bloodline, that, yeah, you, that, that you you're can, still going to keep him relevant. You have many a ways to keep Cody relevant. Cody will help keep himself relevant. He's mm-hmm. a very self-sustainable human being. Yeah. But I don't know. I like I could see that happening. Like if Roman goes away, that might be not a bad thing. Because now you can have a title. Like yeah. now they can't see each other. You have to... Now you're forcing them mm-hmm. to wait and watch this develop even more. Yeah. You can have fucking Roman cutting promos with the title on a movie set. Yeah, you and the, like yeah, big time Ho- rock. Well, yeah, yeah and that's, that's big time rock. Hollywood, and that's like yeah. Now he now now they flip the switch a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cody might look the part, but Roman is the part. It's a good point. Yeah, that's a way to kind of bring you back to like, all right, well. He might not look like the common man, but he is. And here's the fucking Hollywood. Here's Hogan. That might be better. That, that it absolutely mu- it might, might be better to do that. Yeah. Because you have you have them apart. You physically can't have them fucking. And then you, when he's done shooting, you can bring him back and attack the shit out of Cody when he comes back. Maybe even injure him. Who knows? Injure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not an actual bicep tear, but like maybe they break it. Maybe they break his leg. They break his leg. If they break his leg and like say, but it's not Roman. Yeah. Cause it wasn't Flair who broke Dusty's leg. Was it Arn? Well, it was an attack from from the Horseman. Yeah, uh, but, but I don't know if Flair was involved in the attack. No, Flair was involved in the attack, but I don't think he was the one that broke the leg. Yeah. But you have fucking, uh, say, the Usos. The Usos both break his leg, and they wear I Broke Cody's Leg shirts. Oh, my God. God. How awesome would that be? It would be really, really It's recycled goods, but it's good recycled goods. It's classic. It is. And the the kids would probably eat it up. And it would bring back that, for us, and for, like, even the older generation. Yeah. It would bring back like, oh, I can't believe they're doing it again. And then we'll get them locked in. Dude. Yeah. This is like the Wahoo shirt. Yeah. Wahoo McDaniel. Uh yeah. So I do want to kind of hop back from Sunday to Friday because Hunter came out and he did. made an announcement. Yeah, that's fucking so we got the WWE draft coming in in what they said in the upcoming weeks, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, because they do it and he said because they do it four weeks. Like, yeah, it's not yeah, just yeah. like a one well, event said, anymore. Yeah, but he didn't give a date. He said, in the coming weeks, we will have the WWE draft. I would like it if so, they went back. I, as much as I don't like the draft, I would like if they brought it back to, like, where they bring the locker rooms together. Yes. And they get drafted. I agree. And they're pissed that they got to leave. I agree. Like, Taker. I think. That would be cooler. I, and I also, yeah, I love, that's a because classic you could, draft. But you moment. could also get, like, silly with it. Like, you could have Riddle fucking back there getting drafted and be like, wait, what day is fucking that on? It's true. That would be well, really You could make it, like, it could be, like, attitude, ruthless aggression, tell you mm-hmm. where you got backstage and you get to actually see, like, you get a little character in there, too. Once I heard this, I immediately saw what I believe is coming. And I've said it, I've said it now because everyone thinks it's going to happen. And now it's a perfect way of doing it is the breaking up of the Street Profits. I firmly believe the Street Profits are going to be drafted separately. It shows, yes. Yeah, man, that hurts Dawkins. It does, which we said we've said a couple weeks ago before Mania about that about them breaking up, and we said that. I hope uh, it doesn't. I think it's coming. I think you can't ignore. Oh no, no, no! Nonsense. But I hope, I hope, I hope Dawkins lands on his feet. Oh, you mean that? Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. no, no, no. I think Montez Ford has the sky's the limit for him. I agree. Yeah, I think as soon as he, if I think if they break up and they go their separate ways, but they do it in a way where they're not attacking each other, they're kind of just split up. Yeah, I think Montez Ford is almost a shoe in for 
United States. I was going to say, I I wouldn't mind. Montez for the Intercontinental? Yeah, I wouldn't mind him and Gunther. You talk about those styles. Two different, completely different. I'm down for Tez and, and Gunther. For they sure. have, what they have with the draft, which is, I don't know how it doesn't ever end up this way, but you get the obvious fucking outcome is to freshen things up. But for some reason, it doesn't usually happen that way. No, but you know what? I will say this. After such a downer after last week's Monday night and the, the show that we had and how down we were, SmackDown was a lot better. And then Raw was. And then Raw, yeah, Raw on Monday night right, was so a lot we better. We were down. Yes. But was, they brought us down. Like, we were really high. We were. And then they fucking, like, yeah. it's like they cut the cords to the fucking elevator. We're just like, Tower oh, fuck, yeah. yeah. We're like, oh, yes. well, here we go. This is the end. Yeah. That was my outcome. That was my outlook last week. Yeah. This is the end. Yeah. I was very gloom. You were. You were. You were very negative last week. Yeah, Absolutely. I know. And I didn't want to be. I know. But now, the week goes by and... It's a little easier. It's now. a little bit better. Yeah, it's so, well. It's a lot, a lot of it better. It is, and it's we're actually having upbeat conversations yeah. and whatnot, so. and about the future too. Yes, about the future. We're, we're talking worried. about the future. Getting a house, a white picket fence, <laughs> a dog. <laughs> we were very worried about the. We're future gonna of get WWE. a llama. <laughs> now everything we're, looks. Little right. did we know we're buying an alpaca farm. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest things happen in a week. <laughs> I don't know where where the hell that came from. And also, as we're recording tonight, Wednesday being Wednesday night, yes, we have dynamite on. We're tonight. recording on a new night. Yeah, different for us. But yeah, it's really weird here on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a match that I'm uh, oddly interested in on hmm. Dynamite tonight. Oddly, yeah. How odd? For, it's like odd for match. you? Yeah, but because... It's something you wouldn't really be interested in? No. All right, go ahead. Okay. So we have the TNT Open Challenge tonight for Powerhouse Hops. Oh, okay. And it's against Silas Young. All right. So Silas Young's going to get his ass kicked. Yeah, but to see a guy like Silas Young, uh, obviously former ROH... Well, no, he's still with ROH. I mean, oh, is he signed now? I don't... That's the thing. I don't know. Um, But... This is a match where it's... I don't know, AEW's got... AEW hasn't got the grips and the terms of the squash match. Like, they just refuse to do it. Like, <laughs> do it. Build the guy. His name is Powerhouse Hobbs. He's got a name that says, I'm a freak. Let him be Powerhouse Hobbs and let him destroy people. Let him go on this run. Let him actually solidify himself and in turn help bring more eyes to the championship and make the, the championship relevant again. Because I don't think the TNT title has had much meaning. I mean, I know Joe held it. I know Wardlow held it, but... It didn't have much meaning with it, Joe, and I love Samoa Joe. It didn't have much meaning with Wardlow either. No, it had no it meaning It had no Wardlow. pizzazz. No. Let's get that title some pizzazz. I don't know if Powerhouse Hobbs is the guy to do that. No, no, no. I don't mean pizzazz like, like frills and shit. I mean pizzazz as in... <laughs> that was a tough one to say. Pizzazz as in... You, you didn't screw it up. You were No, you I know. Were I was fucking dead on. Just so much so that I had to do it again. Anyway, pizzazz in the fact that let's bring some some gumption to the title. Let's make it mean something. I think Powerhouse Hobbs is the perfect candidate to make it mean something. So after all the negativity of last Monday, I kind of turned to AEW and and hoping that hopes. I was going to get that I was going to get negative? No, 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 no. A fit like me personally I kind of sunk into AW last week. Okay. And really, really paid attention, put my phone down, watched Dynamite, I watched Rampage, oh, and Jesus. I watched Battle of the Belts uh, wow. over the weekend. And you didn't have anything to do last weekend. <laughs> Very envious. So after watching it, and, and this isn't a new revelation by any means for me with AEW, but the thing that I don't think I can – I still can't lock in to AEW is because the one-off matches that are constant and actually the majority of AEW's TV bother me because it's constant one-offs. It's one-off yeah. after one-off after one-off all the time. And this is another one. Even though I'm interested in it, 
and I'll, uh, mostly because I'm Silas Young. I'm, I don't know. I just I'm getting bored of one-off matches for Orange Cassidy. I'm getting bored. Like, look, tonight's another first time ever matchup for on AEW, which is an interesting matchup. Don't get me wrong, but Keith Lee versus Chris Jericho tonight. Like, why? What is why? Like, it's just there's constant questions of why in a ton of matches on AEW, and I don't understand it. I shouldn't be confused on why six matches on a two-hour card are happening because they're just all over the place. The only storyline I see that is consistent right now is the women's the the women's stable with Paige Paige Soraya yeah. so Soraya. I was Soho correct you and Storm. You said Paige. I was like, yep, that's Paige. <laughs> like they're the only ones that that have had that going on with that's, Hater and all them as well. Not, that's not even a fucking. But at least, but I'm into it because it's constant. It's a story. I can follow it. That's that's cool. Like the world title with MJF is still kind of in flux because you're still trying to figure out: is it going to be Darby? Is it going to be Jungle Boy? Who are the pillars are going to step up? Who's going to be able to do it? It should be all four of them. I agree. But it's just everything is in flux all the time. It, it, everything is jumbled. And I just I can't they lock ha- in. They haven't had good storytelling in a long time. Like the elite stuff, the elite stuff with Hangman had me. Remember I was telling you yeah. how it ended and like I, I was interested in it. And then they went away. They and shied it kinda, away. Yeah, it shied away a little bit as far as featuring it goes. The big thing is bringing things back and like in such short amount of time, which doesn't make sense. Like have something build for a while and then bring it back. Like I feel like they're running like they're running a show with the intent to they might not be on the air three years from now. Like I don't know if they're running like that. I don't want to say that because I can't see the Bucks and Khan and Omega no, no, thinking no. like that. No, but that's that's how it looks, though. You're running that's like how it feels is what you're saying. Well, yeah, that's okay, how it feels. You. Like when you're I'll explaining, you. like you're getting all these one-off matches. Like they're running matches. Like, like you should be telling stories. You should have meaningful wrestling matches. You should have like that's what's gonna keep you afloat. Like you have all these. Like you're basically if you're doing dream matches all the time. You're a glorified fucking independent show. Well, on that's, TV, that's the major on, criticism of AEW on is, national TV. You're a glorified what, uh, independent show. What is the word that Bully uses? We used a lot for AEW. He, he called it indie riffing. Yeah, that's what he called AEW. That's what it is. Like you're having all these cool, flashy matches that don't mean jack shit to your show. Like you, like they're not going to get you ratings. Like you're not going to get the ratings that you're looking for. You could announce like these dream matches and. Not for nothing, Keith Lee versus Chris Jericho is not a dream match that is going to get me really up. P.S. Fozzie's playing in the area on Sunday at a bowling alley. Shut the fuck up. You keep talking. I'm going to find, find, find it. You said locally. Locally as in Jersey? Locally as in Philly? Keep speaking. I'm looking. Just okay. go on your... your... So I, I'm, I'm blown away that Fozzie, who sells out arenas... Brooklyn Bowl in Philadelphia. Brooklyn Bowl. I've... It is 1009 Canal Street. Canal? I've never even heard of Brooklyn Bowl. Well, yeah, well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Keep talking about your AEW. <laughs> well, you got my head spinning now. Why Fozzie is playing in a bowling alley in Philadelphia? Like, it I is thought they were a little more legit than 25 that. 25 minutes from here. Really? Yep. Uh, right by Rivers Casino. Oh, sh- oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, so off of Gerard and Delaware Ave. So, okay. So, right part of Fishtown. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, it's right next to Fishtown. Are they, are they sold out? No, you can still get uh, general admission tickets. And you can actually bowl. What, like, you can get VIP tickets and bowl while Fozzie's playing. It's pretty cool. I mean, yo, I'm not saying it's not. It's odd. It is, but it's Chris Jericho. It's look. It's like that's I oh mean, wait, wait, wait. 
It's right up his alley. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh man. Why didn't I see that one coming? <laughs> Either way, I mean... <laughs> Short side quest there for a second. Yes, yeah, so that was a short. So for anyone in Philadelphia quest. that wants to go bowling and listen to Jericho sing, there you go. Um, but I mean, I just I want, and we I think we've said this a lot. I want AEW to be better. I want them to be more captivating, and they have flashes of that. Especially their pay per views are fucking fantastic, and that's what bothers me the most. But they're short. Built stories. Excuse me. They're short built stories with very little. Like a lot of them are. I mean, they're just thrown together, kind of like they they feel very short. So, and then once they're done, they're done. Like the main, their main storylines. Like once they get to the pay per view, it's like it's over, and it feels like it was nothing. I just there's so much older veteran talent. In that company, behind those scenes, I don't understand why storylines are not better Tony at Kong. all. I think that's Tony Khan. Honestly, I do. I mean, I'm not even saying that as a biased opinion, but I think it's Tony Khan. I think he's the final say, and I think I don't. I think he wants to be so different that it's going to hurt him. I mean, you got Paul White, Mark Henry, Dustin Rhodes, Jerry Lynn. Jericho, yeah, Daniel but, Bryan, you and, have and Tony Khan signs all those checks. It, Every it just, single one of them. And I think his his style of wrestling that he liked Don Callis to add to the list, by the way. Yeah, but his his style of wrestling that he liked and that he wants to emulate is the New Japan and ROH. I mean, and he's not even doing that that great. Well, see, ROH. I, I, I can't speak on it. I know you haven't watched any of ROH. We haven't subscribed to the streaming service. No. Um, <clears throat> I barely watched the free the, shit. The cards that they're putting out on Thursdays are pretty fucking good cards. But ROH is different. If I'm going to tune into ROH, I'm not. I'm going to look at it like I used to watch ROH. ROH didn't have these complex stories. It was, this guy had a problem with this guy. This is this is how we're running it. And that was the basis of Ring of Honor. That's what it was. But you accepted that because you knew what Ring of Honor was. You know what I mean? If you had a well, this is Ryan, this is what AEW is. Yeah, but and when you been it for start to tell stories and you're putting them on the back burner, you're bringing them back, you run them for four or five weeks and they're done. You run one to two pay-per-views and that like you're all over the place with storytelling. You're not consistent, so I don't know with what AEW is. That's they're that's that. my. But they, they're they're, that. they're inconsistent. Yes, that's exactly what AEW is inconsistent, and that's why I guess that's why I can't lock in like I I want to lock in. Like I don't want to dislike any wrestling. Look, I don't want to be disinterested in any wrestling. I will put I will put them together side by side. AEW and WWE. There was there was one huge storyline that was being told. In WWE, that was very, very, very captivating. And then there was other things that you can watch while that was happening. That was also cool. I mean, I mean, you have Seth Rollins becoming again massively over. You have, uh, I don't know the. You got Becky Lynch. You got Bianca Belair. You got Charlotte. You got Rhea Ripley's meteoric rise. You got the. Uh, Help me out with their fucking name, Finn Balor. Oh, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. With Edge. With Edge. I mean, that was a continuing storyline, and they didn't really see each other that much. But every time they did, they made it feel like, one, it picked up right where, where it left off, and it felt big. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot of things that were going on that you can be like, oh, I like this. I like this. So this is pretty cool. I mean, with AEW, there's one, there's not that there's not that really big draw, that really big thing that's going to captivate you and bring you into it. So you you're kind of just looking at lesser everything's lesser mm-hmm. so you're trying to pick and choose like uh, like i don't like that's why you're like i don't know if i like anything like that's why your biggest storyline is uh soraya tony storm yeah, and ruby Ro- ruby so- soho yeah. either way sorry mm-hmm. 
That's your biggest storyline. That's what you're putting in comparison to the bloodline fucking storyline. Well, like you're talking about that biggest storyline and most continuous storyline compared to. I wouldn't use the word biggest. It's definitely most continuous. What's but like, their biggest? Well, MJF is their biggest. He's the world champion. champion. But I like, mean, I mean, at least... it doesn't feel significant right now, though. MJF is always significant. Yes, MJF... but does this does this feel substantial? Does this just feel like another stepping stone for? For MJF. Correct. Yes, it does. So you're not going to get fully locked in. Like, this doesn't feel like, a, this didn't feel like a stepping stone for the bloodline. No. There was a right. lot, there was a lot intermixed in there, though. There was, like, the, the fucking rise of Sami Zayn. Like, I don't know if anyone predicted that. Mm-hmm. It kind of just happened. It, it happened organically, and they let it fucking happen. Which is surprising with WWE. Dude, they don't do that a lot. I mean, they- Rusev. Imagine like Rusev Day, like if it were to happen in this, if it were to happen in this climate, who knows what they would have let happen with Hunter? And I think that's the other thing that co- probably bothers me too. Oh, don't oh, I, and while we're staying on AEW, I don't want to because I know you probably didn't see it. Or I'm no, say, you watch no, I think you watch the FDR um career versus belt match. No, you didn't. Okay, the one thing who won. FDR won the titles. Oh, all right. That's what we thought. That's, that's what, what we I thought we figured was gonna, was gonna happen. happen. Yeah. Um, so I that was the one thing, aside from the MJF getting the key to the city for uh Staten Island. Um Woo-hoo. uh but it was entertaining as hell. It was fucking amazing. No, it was so good. That's fine, but who the hell wants a, t- a key? I would give that key back immediately. <laughs> I'd get copies made. But so that was the other thing. It was MJF and it was FDR. They were the two things I was excited about last Wednesday. Rightfully so. And I couldn't wait for it. And I did not expect to come out of the way I came out. I am invested in the guns. I think since the pay-per-view, and they came out with each of them wearing half of Shawn Michaels' old white gear, they came out to 50 Cent's Many Men last Wednesday night. And it was... He's not afraid to get the licensing, is he? No, he's not. And that's the one thing I'll give Tony Khan. He knows, he listens to his talent, and he gets them what they need, and he's not willing to... I mean, he's willing to just come out of his pocket for it. And all of the time, it is the right pick. Because the entrance alone made the guns look legit. And they hung with FTR. They, I fully gave, got my respect. I thought they absolutely killed it. I always thought they were pretty good in the ring. I'm not surprised because of Billy, but the presentation that went into it made them feel like defending champs. It was a white spotlight. Everything else was black. Then you had 50 cents. Many men come on. They're walking to the ring with swagger. They're singing the music. They are confident. They look like champions. And then they go out and they deliver. It was a, a whole new respect. That was the other thing that locked me in that I'm excited for tonight after the show is the guns and FTR. Now, I hope they now again. Is it a rematch? No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying there's a match. I'm just saying here's the point that I'm hoping they prove me wrong of saying this entire conversation about AEW. I hope something happens with the guns. If it keeps going with FTR, cool. Commit but, to something. Yes, do something with them. They were just the main event for the titles. Well, they had, titles. they had that with uh, Caster and um, uh, Bones. Bones. What, what the fuck was her name? What's her name? Oh, Acclaim? The Acclaim. Oh, I was yeah. like, because you said, what's her name? I'm like, no, no, they're, they're, their name. Yeah, the, the Acclaim. Acclaim. Yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. had that with the, the Acclaim. And they're still over, too. I wouldn't mind, although I feel like the Acclaim should probably go after the titles. I would love, even though the ass boy have thing they is dropped, still there. Have they dropped back, though? Are they as over as they were? No. I mean, yes, yeah, 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 they are. They they are probably, aside, I, don't know if F, I don't know if I would even call FDR over Acclaim. The Acclaim are the best, the most over tag team in AEW, period. Interesting. Still. Still, but FTR puts on the best matches. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, no one can touch FDR tag team match. Well, the Bucks can come close. Yeah, but different styles. Yes, yeah. but we'll put them together. I want them to do something, and I'm hoping tonight the the guns, even if they cut a promo, just let me see them. They are your former champs. Let me see them do something because this is where well, this is what happens with AW and why I can't lock in. You got me in. 
even if it's it, just the presentation and their wrestling it, it was really good. You got me locked in. Now I want to see them again. I want to see how they how they face adversity. What's next for the guns? Will they go back after? I want to see all this tonight. Is AEW going to let me down? I'm going to be very pissed if I don't see the guns. And like that's so my story that keeps going. You're absolutely. It's a very bloated roster, as we point out almost every show. No, no, we haven't touched on that in a while because it's just the same thing. Yeah. Now they're getting more people back. True. Adam Cole's back, right? Yes. Which is good to see Adam Cole. I'm glad he's healthy. Glad he's able to wrestle again. His match with uh, uh, Garcia was very good. And I think they're kind of leaning towards a Jericho Cole uh, coming up soon because Jericho kind of did a very, very good job with uh, a stare down or a lack thereof because they did streamers and Adam Cole won his return match and Fozzie's music hits and Jericho walks down, gets a dejected Daniel Garcia and doesn't look at him back, but kind of looks at his shoulder and just stands still and then turns and keeps walking, gets a top of a ramp, does the same thing and then walks into the tunnel. Hmm. And I was like, huh, and then he cut a promo. So why the fuck is he wrestling Keith Lee? That again, that a uh, yes. He cut a promo about why he did it. And you left, you, you celebrated. Meanwhile, Daniel Garcia could have had a concussion and he's really hurt. And then Keith Lee, like I, I just I'm lost. Make it make sense. Exactly. I'm lost when you're doing these stories that you're make a lost no boy. sense. You're, I am. You're I really a lost am. boy. When it comes to AEW, I am, unfortunately. Gotta get you back to Neverland. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll go with, with the that. monkey. Yeah, there's a monkey. In yeah, there? the the ranch. No, I'm gonna get you. Back. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna go take you there. I'm gonna bring you to Michael Jackson. You said house. Neverland. I immediately went to Peter Pan, oh, no, not ne- Michael Jackson. Oh, I know. That's why I went there. Well, I know well, what you. I, I know got you. a title for the show now. The one in Neverland. Yes. Uh. Yeah. So. Okay. I mean. Uh, yeah. I. It was nice to really distract you and get you through well, right, right I mean, through. You do a good job out of it. I just Every, I gotta give it to weekly. you. Weekly. I really gotta give it to you. Weekly. So uh it's my thing. You got anything else? I don't think I had anything to begin with. That's a good point. That's a very you're very the guy that comes point. up with the topics. Yes. I just add color commentary. That's yeah. I don't do the prep work. Yeah. I'm the Heenan. Yeah. Tear your monsoon. That is a compliment and a half. Wow. Wow. I'm not even comfortable being called that. Yeah. Well, wow. That's how it is. Wow. All right. I'm going to end on that. Yeah. End on a nice I'm going to end on that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching and listening. And we'll be talking to you very soon.